Hello and welcome to GD Life at Pals with Teacher Alex. Today's subject is GD Science and the topic is Solutions and Solubility and Acids and Alkalis. Let's have a quick overview. We will talk about what a solution is. We will have a look at important terms and definitions for the topic. We will learn about solubility and saturation, weak and strong solutions and acids and alkalis. First of all, a solution is a special type of homogeneous mixture composed of two or more substances. In such a mixture, a solute is a substance dissolved in another substance known as the solvent. The term solution is commonly applied to the liquid state of matter, but solutions of gases and solids are possible. Some characteristics of solutions include a solution is a homogeneous mixture of two or more substances, the particles of solute in a solution cannot be seen by the naked eye. The solute from a solution cannot be separated by filtration or mechanically. It is composed of only one phase. A phase is a region of space throughout which all physical properties of a material are uniform. Water-based solutions are called aqueous solutions. On the right side we see the process of making a salt solution where table salt or sodium chloride is dissolved in water. Once dissolved the salt cannot be removed by filtration. It is a homogeneous mixture, it is one phase that has the same physical property throughout the whole mixture. So some important terms, we talked about some already. A solution, a homogeneous mixture of solvent and dissolved solute. The solvent is the base of the solution, the substance in which the solutes dissolve. The solute is the substance that dissolves in the solvent. To dissolve is to cause a solute to pass into a solution. Soluble, a substance is soluble when it can dissolve in the given solvent and a substance is insoluble when it cannot dissolve in the given solvent. The solubility relates to the maximum amount of solute that can be dissolved in a specific solvent at a given temperature. And the phase is a region of space throughout which all the physical properties of a material are essentially uniform. All solutions have only one phase. Again, the example with the table salt on top, the salt solution has one phase. An example of a mixture that is not homogeneous but heterogeneous is a mixture of oil and water. And we can see two distinct phases here, the oil phase and the water phase. Both phases have different physical properties. For example, the density is different. Oil has a lower density than water because it floats on top of the water. Okay, let's talk about solubility. The concentration of a solution refers to how much of the solute is dissolved in the liquid. It is usually measured in gram per centimeter cube or mole, mole per decimeter cube. Mole refers to the amount of substance or amount of particles. Solubility is the maximum amount of solute that will dissolve in a certain amount of water or solution at a given temperature. Take a look at the graph on the right side and we can see that while temperature increases most solid solvents increase, uh, most solid solutes increase in solubility where gases decrease in solubility as the temperature rises. Now that is something quite important to remember with increasing temperatures, solids usually dissolve better and we can dissolve more of the solid in the solvent, in water, whereas the solubility of gases in water decreases when the temperature is increasing. Saturation. True solution appears clear if it has color, you can still see through it. If there are undissolved particles, the solution will become cloudy. So what happens when water can no longer dissolve a certain solute? This is referred to as saturation. Saturation is the point at which a solution can dissolve no more of that solute. And any additional amounts of it will appear as undissolved particles. 
there are three degrees of saturation as shown in the table on the right. An unsaturated solution. We can still add more solute and it will keep on dissolving. For example, one teaspoon of salt placed into a bucket of water that creates an unsaturated solution. If you add another teaspoon of salt, it would still dissolve. A saturated solution. The liquid has dissolved the maximum amount of solute that is possible at that temperature. Adding a spoon after spoon after spoon of sugar to a single cup of iced tea and at some point there is no more sugar dissolving. The solution is saturated and the rest of the sugar falls to the bottom of the cup. A supersaturated solution. The liquid contains more solute than it can theoretically dissolve at a given temperature. This occurs if you have a very hot saturated solution and slowly cool it down. The solubility of the solute decreases as the solution cools. We've seen that before. We take a solid solute and when we decrease this temperature, its solubility will decrease. So hot solutions can dissolve more solute than cold solutions. And when we cool them down, it becomes supersaturated. These solutions are not stable and crystals will eventually start to form. Weak and strong solutions. Solutions can be described as dilute or concentrated. Dilute means that a small amount of solute is dissolved in the solvent. Concentrated means there is a lot of solute dissolved in the solvent. Both are usually unsaturated. So if we go back to the table, when we talk about dilute and concentrated, we are still in the unsaturated part. So one more example. Dilute solution has very little solute, can dissolve a lot more solute concentrated solution has a lot of solute in it and can only dissolve a little more solute before we reach the point of saturation as we can see on the right. This solution is saturated, has the maximum amount of solute in it. If we would now cool the solution down it would become super saturated and it holds more solute than theoretically possible. That solute will at some point start to crystallize. Acids and alkalis, a short introduction to that topic. There is a lot more to learn about this topic. The acidity, alkalinity or neutrality of a solution is also described in terms of strength. In a strong acid, nearly all of the acid molecules will form ions, whereas in a weak acid, only some of the molecules will form ions. The strength of the solution is shown using a scale of numbers called the pH scale. The pH numbers range from 0 to 14. The solution with pH numbers less than 7 from 0 to 6 are acidic. Examples for include citrus juices and battery acid or stomach acid. The lower the pH number, the stronger the acid. Solutions with pH numbers greater than 7 are alkaline. An example is milk or baking soda, or an ammonia solution, or soapy water. A solution with a pH of exactly 7 is considered a neutral solution. Pure water is neutral. That's what is used to define neutrality. Pure water, distilled water, is defined as a neutral solution. All right, let's have a look at some questions. Which of the following is not an example of a solution? Water, gasoline, salt water, or 14 karat gold? The correct answer is A. Pure water is not a solution. Gasoline is a mixture of different liquids, so we have a solution. Same as salt water. And gold is a mixture of different solids. It's a solid solution. 
A dilute solution of lemon juice with a pH of 1.5 would be classified as a strong acid. Weak acids range from pH 6, 5 to 4. pH 1.5 would be a strong acid. Connect the terms to the correct image and description. We have three images and the information is more solute dissolves, no more solute dissolves and crystals grow. The first top left is an unsaturated solution. The bottom left is a saturated solution and the added crystals that grow, they grow in a supersaturated solution. This was GD Live at Pals with teacher Alex on the topic solutions and solubility and acids and alkalis. I hope to see you next time.